Hey, Tobias, I got your scene here. I appreciate you sending that over. Looking at your rendering and the reference you included, I want to start by saying I think you did a great job matching the overall mood of the shot. I'd actually say in many ways it's an improvement from the initial reference. The highlight for me in this scene is your use of procedural scattering to scatter all of the different layers of vegetation, taking thought to scatter elements like the dry fallen leaves on the roof, the overgrown feel of everything. It's just really well executed. My changes to the scene are definitely subjective, meaning some you may decide aren't really an improvement. That said, I'll try to talk through my reasoning behind everything I do and the why and the artistic principles at play. From that, you can hopefully pick and choose what you want to implement into your own scene. Before we get into artistic aspects though, let's go ahead and do an optimization pass on your scene. This initial rendering took my computer three minutes, 39 seconds. That's really pretty good, so I don't know if we'll really be able to get that down, but let's give it a shot. First, under sampling, let's change the max sample number. Really, this should be a doubling value, so two, four, eight, 16, 32, and so on. This is a small optimization, but it could make a difference. Also, I'm gonna set this to a lower value. Let's try 256, and if we need to up it, we can always come back. Your noise threshold is pretty low. Like I said, we can always come back if the result we get isn't clear enough. For now, let's increase this to 0.02. I'm good to keep the denoiser on. Under light paths, I'm gonna clamp indirect light even more. This can help reduce fireflies and the scene to resolve faster. And since we don't have significant caustics, let's disable reflective and refractive caustics. That's all for now. We'll definitely be optimizing more moving forward, but some optimizations will happen within the artistic phase. So let's give it another render and see where we're at. Arguably a little bit less detail here, but to be honest, we're well within a range that I'm comfortable with. And for the time saving, I'm pretty happy with the result. Our new render time is 47 seconds, so almost a whole three minutes faster. Next, let's take a pass with texture optimizations. I'm using an add-on called To Optimize. It's in my recommended add-on list. To start, we can run an analyzer on our collection data. What that's done is it's color-coded our collections and let us know what's eating up memory in our scene. As we see, the foreground is quite heavy, which isn't bad because I guess that's what's closest to the camera but that comes in at 72% of the scene memory. If nothing else, helpful insight for now. I'll just clear that collection analyzer. Next, we can analyze the 3D view. Do that and we can see these foreground trees are the heaviest aspect of the scene. Again, not a terrible thing, but we'll see what we can do to optimize. Go ahead and clear that as well. Let's head on down to the image data analyzer. This digs through our whole file and lists the images which are heaviest on top. As we can see, our ground texture is coming in at 95 megabytes, not unreasonable, but let's spend some time just shrinking a few of these down and then take a look to see if it impacts render time and if it's a huge change in our memory usage. We can click clear duplicate images, but in this scene, fortunately, it didn't find any. I'm gonna start by selecting just our top images. Anything over 20 megabytes, I'll scale those down to 2048 or 2K. When we update the image list, as we can see, we reduced our top memory hog from 95 megabytes down to just 16. We could spend some more time optimizing, but let's just give this a render and see where we're at. So render time, nothing insane here. We saved a single second, but we are down to significantly less memory usage, which if you're on an older graphics card, this can be a huge help. Our scene is more stable now, loads into the engine faster and is less likely to crash. We can come back and re-optimize our scene at any time. This tool is a huge help. If you get a scene that's always crashing, you might be surprised what textures are hogging all of your memory. I've looked at scenes with gigabytes of data hiding in the background totally out of sight. With that peace of mind and initial optimizations, let's get into some artistic changes. The main artistic principle I wanna discuss is contrast. Now contrast is something a lot of us think about in terms of light and dark. And while that's true, I also wanna talk about contrast as a principle of color and texture. 
When I look at your image, I see high texture frequency across the board. In your defense, I also see it in the reference photo. There's just a lot to look at, and so my eye isn't particularly drawn to a subject. If anything, I'm drawn to look at the trees in the background, which have high contrast and value, and high contrast with their texture frequency compared to the rest of the scene. To battle that, I'll introduce an extra layer of volume to further enhance this feeling that the background is fading away into the mist. Easing off the background texture guides our eyes to the subject matter. Let's talk about contrast in value. The lighting in this scene is good, and again does a good job matching your reference. I do, though, want to talk about something called additive composition or additive lighting. Additive composition is an approach to lighting where we start with a dark scene and we only add light where we need it, being very intentional about where we draw attention. If I take the original scene and remove the color, we get a dark silhouette where the shack is, which actually does all right at drawing our eye. However, with our new approach, I want to try drawing the viewer's eye even more. Sometimes, artists will start by filling the entire scene with this omnipresent light, and then trying to subtract it. This can result in less intentional lighting. Not always, but I find it's easier to take an additive approach overall. So I'm going to start by doing something really mean, by disabling all of your lights and your gobo objects and the environment light. As expected, we have a clean, dark slate. Now let's add our first light. Let's keep with the principle of the light gobo here, like you had previously with those planes blocking out the light. Rather than add light and subtract it with the planes though, let's just add light in the form of that leaf gobo shape. To do this, you can add a spotlight and plug a black and white image of tree leaves into the emission value. For the mapping and texture coordinate, just use the normal of the spotlight. I'll position it to illuminate the shack and then play with the power and radius. A larger radius softens the light contrast and power, of course, changes the power. The spot size will broaden the reach of the light. When I think again about contrast as a principle of color, here's what I can observe. Green definitely showed up to work today, and while I do see some red tones and the fallen leaves here, which is good color contrast, I want to try and take this in a new direction. In nature, where there's no artificial light, we have a great color contrast principle at our disposal. This can come in the form of cool and warm color tones. For our subject, the hut, I'll introduce some warm lighting tones. I like a warmer tone for this light to contrast against the cooler tones in the background. Speaking of which, let's bring back some environment light. Let's keep it relatively dark here. Again, it's not that we're changing this from day to night. We could still communicate that this is a daytime scene. We could just be more intentional about where we actually show that. The majority of the scene is engrossed in a dark forest. Our subject matter, however, is bathed in an intense, bright, warm light. We have our key light already, but let's add some more in the form of an overhead soft area light. I'll add one more area light to the foreground to add some fill detail to the trees keeping the value low and the color neutral. All I've really done here is play with three principles of contrast. Color contrast by introducing warm and cool tones to draw the eye. Value contrast by taking an additive lighting approach, starting from nothing and only adding light where I really want it, resulting in a stronger value focal point and more contrast. This is subjective and completely changes the feel of the rendering, so it's up to you if you like it or not. I just wanted to explore that principle. And finally, contrast and texture detail. Adding a separate and additional fog layer in the background and choosing not to light the scene from the back. Color, value, texture. As a final step, I'll play in the compositor with a color balance node, diamond sharpen, and other small color tweaks. I also pushed the camera in slightly and made the depth of field more pronounced with a smaller focal length to further separate the subject from the background. Our final render time is sitting at around 50 seconds, slowed a bit by our extra layer of volume scattering. Now time for the big question. Did I improve your scene? From the start, I talked about how this review is subjective, so that is ultimately up to you to decide. 
What I hope, though, is I at least showed you a few good principles along the way that you can use in this scene and others as you see fit. Thanks for watching. If you'd like me to review your scenes, sign up for mentorship at offworlddepot.com. Thanks to our supporters and everyone helping support and grow this platform. I'll see you in the next one.